the, uh, the ballot initiative. Um, you know, we, we at City Hall, we typically don't like ballot initiatives very much. Um, but we have approved a ballot initiative to go forward, and that is to deal with the two main topics, the Gatsby 45 and the CalPERS issue. And we wanted to let you, the public, weigh in on that. We already have a scheduled election in November coming up, and it's been advertised in the paper that that might cost as much as $50,000, and it's simply not true. The real price is more like $15,000, and it gives the public an opportunity to weigh in to say, what do you think about these two issues? And when there's an opportunity for such strongly contested items such as these two, um, I think it's appropriate to let the public weigh in, and that's what we've attempted to do with the ballot initiative. Normally, we don't support ballot initiatives, but we have got a lot of work ahead of us dealing with not only these two issues, but many other issues to balance this city for the long term. And so we thought it would be appropriate to use every tool that we have available to combat what I call stubbornness within the unions. The unions I don't dislike, and I understand the unions very well. They fight for their unions' rights and pay, and I understand that. And there was a time in this nation that that was exactly what they needed to do. And they still need to do that today. Nothing's really changed in that manner. But when we're in a global recession of this magnitude, they must understand and see those numbers. Our numbers and our books are open to all, and that they must work with us and make some concessions so that all keep working and we make it through this. And we will. And we will. So it's a tough time at City Hall. I encourage you all to come to our council meetings. The last one was a record-setting night. It went to 2 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, but that's the kind of uh, difficult decisions that we have. We have a lot of tough stuff to do. It's going to take a lot of time. It's stressful. I think you have a good council, and uh, they're willing to stick it out and to make the tough decisions. Uh, but it is not easy up there. And uh, you know, we appreciate the support that you give us, and I appreciate you letting me speak here today. She was with us about six, seven months. Uh, she moved on to a different job. At that time, her salary was in excess of $100,000. Very expensive. So at that time, we decided not to replace her. That we felt a different approach would be necessary and a lot cheaper. So we hired what's sometimes called as a hired gun. I like that term. Uh, and that is a negotiator that comes in when we call him, and then he goes home to deal with ongoing union negotiators, negotiations. And that's what we've done. And this will save us a lot of money. In fact, we do not pay him benefits. So realistically, we're only going to, in fact, we've only, have, we've only authorized the use of funds up to about $50,000 for him over the course of the whole year, instead of well over $100,000. So it's, and, and this particular gentleman has a lot of expertise in the exact kinds of issues that we're dealing with today. And he's a person that's had over 25 years of experience. Um, and I think he'll do the city very well for the conditions that we have today. These are tough conditions. And most negotiators, this is not a situation that would serve them well. These are tough times. When you live in this town and you have to negotiate with, with your neighbors and your friends, essentially, um, and then you have to go home to those neighbors and friends, it's very stressful on you. And with this particular situation where we have a, a, a negotiator that comes in from out of town, he does our business, and then he leaves. And it's easier for him, and it's easier for him to accomplish the goals of council. And uh, his name is Mr. Avery, and uh, so far, so good. It's a new system that we're trying, uh, but I believe it is the right system today for what we have to deal with today. Is it, is it correct that historically it was city employees doing the that is what we've always had. Now one would wonder about that. And that 
is what we have. And in this particular person, he works for the city, if you will, but he understands, I think, our goals and of our objectives. And that's the way that it was supposed to be in the past. But, you, but it, there, there is some, some thinking that how are you going to get fully your, your objectives and goals through when you have someone that essentially is a city worker. It's, it's a tough concept. And uh, again, I think what we have today will suit us very well for the conditions that we have and save us quite a bit of money in the, in the short and long term, both. County has a very similar situation. They have a hired gun, if you will, and they bring that person in. They're not on the payroll day in and day out. They don't get the, the benefits, and they use them. And in fact, we looked at what the county had been doing and said, you know what, we like what you're doing. I think we're going to do it, and that's, that's what we're doing. We're doing very much what the county does. Pardon? We, we talked to them. Uh, <laughs> But you know, it's, uh, there are different issues, different issues with the county, and I really do believe, as good as the, the county negotiator is, I actually really believe that the negotiator that the city of Reading has has more expertise to the types of functions and needs that the city of Reading has, or city has, as opposed to what a county has. So I, I think he'll serve us well, and time will come. And you know, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. I make mistakes. If this doesn't work in the future, we will make that change. We simply will try it. We're doing the best that we can with what we know. And if it doesn't work, we will make that change. And I will admit that it didn't work well. And I can tell you what we had in the past didn't work well. And we've made that change. And I think this is going to work better. 